Hello gamers, I am Mike Zorch, and this is Zorch Reacts. I have done one video so far in this series. I reacted to Joe Cat's A Crap Guide to Final Fantasy, Tanks, and this is another one. This is going to be a ongoing series. I will be covering the Inside Star Citizen episodes. These are released every Thursday by CIG on their Star Citizen channel, and they're usually pretty informative. Uh, the level of transparency for this game is just absolutely amazing. This episode is on an important ship, the Misk Odyssey. Tigra bought an Odyssey. Uh, he sat down with us to, to discuss it because it meant that he had to melt down some of the ships he has, get store credit to be able to pay for it, because it's an expensive ship, it's like six hundred dollars. So he got, he melted down his Freelancer Max, the Constellation Phoenix, and one other. And he picked up for the, he picked up the raft to get the lifetime insurance token to apply to it. So, um, he was able to pay significantly less money than it would have would have cost to actually buy it out or to make the donation outright so that they let you do that they don't let you use store credit for like certain things like war bond ships uh, that is something that's a, that's something special that they do only so often but uh, yeah this is gonna be an important ship now you didn't want to get rid of the carrot this is a ship that's in a similar class to the Carrot, an exploration vessel. So, uh, we saw videos by Board Gamer and um, some others on this based on information from the website. And we were really intrigued by this ship, which is why we picked it up. But uh, now we're going to get a lot more details about this vessel. And so let's begin. This is the first MISC ship in about five years. In my mind, it'll be pushing into the further expanses of the universe. Same design. You can't see shit out of the cockpit. Yeah, the freelancer is the same way. Going as far as you can go and seeing what's out there. That is typical. The type of design. player this ship should appeal to is those players who just like traditionally non-combat experiences. The Odyssey is sort of designed for a more generic role in terms of they want to go off into the wild blue yonder and just explore. Being MISC, uh, obviously they work closely with Gian and incorporate tech, so that primarily on the art side gave a lot of flexibility, but on the design side allowed us to... Okay, want to stop here? What they said here about um, exploration. That's what Elite Dangerous was built for. The entire game is like purpose built for exploration. It has an entire galaxy that you can explore. Billions of stars. They use their Stellar Forge engine to create billions of stars. Yet, a game that seems purpose built for space exploration Exploration is an afterthought. See, a frontier development caters to the PvP players. And whenever the explorers tried to suggest changes that would improve exploration, the PvP players gang up on them, call them uh, Care Bears, harass them, call them names. They become the loudest voice in the room and Frontier listens only to them. And so exploration has gotten basically the short end of the stick in a game that was purpose-built for exploration with vast amounts of stars and planets to be able to go and explore. And explorers are at a disadvantage. Like, And 
Frontier doesn't care. Look at the Gnosis incident that happened. I don't know if any of you know about this. Some of those of you who play Elite Dangerous probably do, where the Gnosis is a a capital ship. It's not like a fleet carrier. It's it's a bigger ship. It's a mega ship. And it's controlled by players. But uh, Frontier has to actually move the ship. But the players can go... It, a player or organization owns the ship. And so they were going to do an expedition out to someplace really far off in the galaxy. They were going to, they were going to go there. There was, there was this region of space that you could actually get to that was surrounded by all these regions that, for some odd reason, were permit locked. And so they were allowed to go there. Well, they 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 selected the destination. They sent it to Frontier, and Frontier approved it. So, dozens of people showed up to take part in this mission. They you had to go to the mega ship and dock with it in order to be able to go. So they docked with it. Frontier moved the ship. They didn't move it to their destination. They moved it to somewhere else. And the minute the ship came out of came out of hyperspace. It was dogpiled by griefers and thargoids, and because there is an exclusion zone around the ship, the explorers who equipped their ships for exploration and not for combat, if they fired back to protect themselves, they got a crime stat. And when they got blown up, they respawn at a at a um at a prison. Not the same way you respawn at a prison in Star Citizen. Star Citizen, you respawn in a prison. You're doing time for a certain amount of time, and then you're and then you're let out. But in Elite Dangerous, you die. You have to repurchase your ship. You have to pay the rebuy cost for your ship, and then you respawn at a at a prison in a vessel. And if you can't rebuy your ship, then you're given a starter vessel, a little um, sidewinder. And they did that to the Gnosis, a very big, high-profile ship owned by players. And they were going to do this big expedition. And Frontier just told them, fuck you. That contrasts to here to where they're catering to, where CIG is catering to the explorer. They're giving the explorers their own gameplay loops so they don't have to participate in PvP. PV, they are not focusing solely on PvP. They're not making that the game's focus. They're, you know, Elite Dangerous seems purpose built for exploration, yet they're focusing everything on PvP. Here, they're not doing that. They're building the game so that the players can decide what they want to do and not try and force a certain gameplay on people. Not like Frontier. Frontier is trying to force people into PvP. Here they're not. That's the big contrast. All right. To justify some of the more interesting features mm. of the ship. In terms of the ship from front to back, there's a lot more of that cool levitation tech. Got that classic sort of wide cockpit that we see on MISC ships like the Freelancer. Underneath, you know, we've got like a prospector type bubble where you can house okay. two crew. I one like person the does the tractor prospect. beaming, one person does the mining. We've got two unmanned turrets for a little bit of self-defense. There's one at the back under the underneath too. And you then the pilot has a variety of missiles to use. On the interior, we've split it over three levels in total. Ah, so Top in deck is mainly mode. some engineering okay. space and refinery. It's where they're so you can mine building out and refine interior. it for the ship itself. So that essentially gives you the ability to just generate your own quantum and hydrogen fuel. Obviously, Star is. But will you be able to refine other stuff? It's not a 
game breaker if you can't refine other materials. If you can just refine quantanium and hydrogen fuel and, and other, other materials to get your hydrogen fuel, that's fine. It's not a game breaker if you can't refine other stuff. It would have been nice because it would help the ship pay for itself in game. But the fact that you can mine for quantanium, refine it, and put it in your fuel tank without having to stop at a, a starport or a space station in order to refuel, which can be really expensive because someone someone had a raft and they did a lot of, of cargo runs and they had a 16 thousand credit refuel charge that could help pay for this ship long um long in the long run in game to where where you don't have to refuel anywhere where you can just re keep your keep your fuel tanks topped up by just finding an asteroid somewhere and drilling up quantanium that's that's a game changer not even the Carrick can do that. Uh, it could potentially, because those cargo pods underneath the Carrick are supposed to be removable and replaceable with different kinds. So one with a mining laser and tractor beam could be put down there. Maybe, and maybe one with a refinery that could add that functionality to the Carrick, but it would be optional. This, it's built in. So it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. We know we're introducing more systems. Fuel is going to become right a major there. issue, right? And so this is There's perfect for that, that kind of that. scenario. The, the middle deck is the sort of the, probably that. the most dominant of the three. You have a, a bridge at the front of the ship, and oh. it's quite wow. a nice bridge on the Odyssey because you have this huge bank of stations for all the crew to sit there all in one place. Cool, that's big. Every crew member has their own room with ensuite facilities on board. Cool. Equipment room. There you put on your spacesuits. Okay, that looks like a ship bay. Wow. And then the the lower deck leads us to the whoa, hangar, whoa, whoa, which whoa, is whoa, basically whoa. what the whole ship is formed around, essentially. Is that a so that really did dictate the dimensions. Okay, the that can of hold a pretty good size. It's a generic hangar. It's designed to our environmental hangar that metrics. So an there's Ursa. a huge range of ships that can fit in there. You could bring a fighter ship Ursa. if you want more defense. You could bring a prospector if you want to do Whoa. even mining. The the hangar on there is a, a this huge is not going to be a small support ship. any choice you want to make with ships. This thing's easily size wise there's on a par little with the medical bay in there for any accidents that happen along the way. That's cool. Med bay. And just like on the Carrick, it will be a spawn point. For if your character dies, that's where you will you can register it as a spawn point to respawn there instead of back at a space station. That's cool. The 890 Jump is the only other ship that has a bed as a spawn point. The Cutlass Red used to. But the Cutlass Red has been degraded, has been downgraded to a, I think it's a Type, Type Three or Type, I forget which direction they go. But it's been, it's basically a ambulance in space, so it doesn't, it ha, it can treat certain injuries, but it can't also be used as a spawn point. It's an ambulance. This is a spawn point. It can treat everything up to the most severe of injuries. You still have to go to the hospital for that. 
We have this one room which is kind of really in there just as like the rule of cool. You can just sort of sit there and just see space, you know, as you're zooming along. That's just like the process. The natural competitor to the Odyssey is the carrot. In my yeah. mind, it's a carrot killer. What you can do with it is pretty impressive. It's kind of the multi-tool of the spaceship world. It just gives you almost ultimate flexibility on how you want to play. The Mist Odyssey is the ultimate exploration ship. The Mist Odyssey is the first offering from the storied manufacturer Disco in quite some time, and they seem intent on bursting back into the scene with a massive impact that is sure to make Carrick owners look twice. And while that rap... Look at the helmet in the background. I'm just saying, there's, there's hope for this guy. Wraps up our multi-week coverage of the new ships and vehicles of this year's Intergalactic Aerospace Expo. Let's go ahead and take a look into the future with a special vehicle-themed sprint report. Hmm. To get things started, members of the EU vehicle content team have returned their attentions to the hull A and hull C as they continue refining the work previously done in order to bring it up to current standards and, waiting perhaps most importantly, metrics. Now. That's how it's going to work. Now, if you've been following the project for some time, you'll know we learn with each and every ship we make, and it's essential to take those lessons forward so they can inform each and every ship yet to come. Now, while the whole A continues its journey through final art exterior and gray box interior, so what you can see done. here with the hull C are the results of not just some recent lighting passes, but an effort to update the interior scales of certain areas for improved player and NPC comfort alike, cool. addressing those metric issues. And yeah, they discovered that NPCs, in order to use the bathroom, need more space. So they had to increase the size of the bathrooms for the NPCs. Yeah and experimenting with some early attempts at new building block screens for tractor beams and the like. Oh. And speaking of tractor beams, the vehicle content team has begun building the size one, two, and three tractor beams that can be equipped to a variety of vehicles, bringing with it some long awaited functionality About to ships like the 300 seen here, the Caterpillar, and more. Minor updates are also underway to the Starfarer as it gets ready to make its debut not just as the first refueling ship in Star Citizen, but the first refining vehicle as well, as new additions to the exterior walkway will allow it to take canisters of newly mined fuel from other spaceships for processing. And yes, we want to update the interior just as much as you do. We're looking at where we can slip that into the schedule now, so uh, hang tight. Ah, these older ships Up next, need to be redone. let's move along to the Vulture, the entry level salvage ship from Drake, which has moved oh, into final art phase. I want we'll one look of these. at the habitation area, as well as the cockpit. Oh, that's nice and big. And for ships just beginning their journey, we can announce that the Scorpius fighter from RSI has begun its journey that, through white box space. The team works to ensure all current metrics are met and that all the component That's spaces the work as we'd like thing them to. to an X -wing and so far, so good, gonna get with no surprises, in which Star itself is kind of always a surprise. And finally, before we let you go, we showcase the updated concepts for the Banu Merchantmen at this year's CitizenCon. And now I'm pleased to report that in our final IAE 2951 vehicle episode, that the Merchunk Man itself has begun its journey and moved from concept phase into white box with this highly anticipated Ooh. first image. Okay, hey, everything rough. starts somewhere. She may not look like much, but she's got it okay. where it counts. And you're going to get stuff. Follow rough. along with it from the very beginning of its journey from this point forward. So what did we learn this week? Well, we learned that Misk wasn't content to just let Anvil sit alone at the top <laughs> of the exploration pyramid with the recently revealed Odyssey that there are a variety of new ships and ship updates that will make their way to the persistent universe between this year's IAE and the next. Mm -hmm. And that sometimes I'm just going to hide stuff in the outro to reward folks who watch until the very end. <laughs> Something like a, a bunch more Banu Merchantman updates, maybe. Ooh. Looking this good. This going to be basically a shopping nice. space. Nice. Flying shopping That's mall. a turret, not an ED-209. Hmm.
Again. Boom and some video. Oh, nice. Yes, sometimes I'm a jerk, but I'm your jerk. But don't forget that our big IAE All Ships Q&A airs tomorrow on Star Citizen Live on Twitch. And it's your chance to ask about the Spartan, the Raft, the Odyssey, and all the latest vehicles from this year's IAE. And then we'll be right back here next week with a look at the exciting future of Gravlev and revamped Jumptown 2, both coming in Alpha 360. Ah. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. We'll see you all next week. Yes, Gravlev needs work. And now, for people who stick around until the very end, uh, I got this. Oh. What, what the fuck? It's not coming soon though sometimes we like to have fun what the f wait no 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 they're not they are not oh shit wait until tiger sees this <laughs> okay um uh, all righty then uh we learned a little bit more about the Odyssey, of what it's going to do. Uh, we knew it was, it's definitely an exploration vessel. We knew that. But uh, we got a lot more information. That thing is going to be massive. That's easily on par with the uh, 890 jump in size. I was not expecting it to be that big. I was expecting it to be about the same size as the Carrick. No, that thing's bigger. That looked much, much bigger. Well, that's going to be 890 jump size. And then uh, the Merchant Man. The Merchant Man's been something that they've been talking about for a while now. Where it's going to be a Banu ship. It's going to carry a Banu Defender in a bay that opens up on the top. And ships can dock with it. And they're basically a floating shopping mall. There'll be shops on the inside where you can go in and do some trading. And that's what the Banu are all about. They're an alien race of traders and merchants. So that's what they're all about. There's in now uh, the Drake Kraken, which is a carrier. That's also going to have a variant that's basically going to be a flying shopping mall. And the ship that they had parked in their vehicle bay. I decided, I forget which that one was. That had, that's a large fighter. I imagine you could get some sizable fighters into that bay, some sizable ship for, or even a handful of Pisces. Uh, Pisces is the smallest ship that you can park in the carriage. And you can just barely get it in there. You could get quite a bit into uh, quite a bit into the Odyssey. Ah, I was surprised. And that vehicle bay, it looked like it had a lot of room. It, that Ursa was sitting in there. And it was still room. Now he mentioned Gravlev, revamping Gravlev, and they desperately need to revamp the Gravlev for Gravlev vehicles. The Drake Dragonfly and the Knox, both uh, hovering, hovering bikes. Because when you get on them, you shoot up to the full height, especially if you're inside a ship, and you're just banging up against the roof of the ship and you can't properly get out on, on some ships. They need it to where you can drop down the hover, drop it down a little, and then get out and then maybe have a you know, variable variable height on your hover on your lift because if you're gonna just shoot up the full height you're smacking up against the ceiling in a lot of ships and we 
got a uh, one time we got a dragon let's see yeah one time we got uh, the Drake dragonfly stuck in a freelancer max once because of that so yeah uh, they definitely need to revamp that and then the thing at the end I'm gonna have to rewatch that uh anyway this has been my first uh first reaction to inside stars there will be more to come you can see these every week so thank you for watching i have been mike zorch don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon and i'll see you next time